What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Handy Life. Today we're in the breakfast area of the house and we're going to be working on this wall here to dress it up by putting some paneling, some wainscoting. But let's hop right into it and I'll show you what I've done. I'm going to trim this window out using similar materials to what I'm going to build the wainscoting out of. And then once it's, uh, once it's trimmed out, I'm going to tie the wainscoting um, rails and styles into the window trim work. For this, for this type of thing, as far as deciding the horizontal spacing of the styles, it gets a little bit more difficult. To me, it should be symmetrical about the center of the window. If it's not symmetrical about the window, to me, that's going to look really weird. Um, so I made them symmetrical about the window. The spacing of the styles below the window are 19 and 3 quarters. So not that much different than the spacing on the wall to the right, wall number one. I don't think it's going to be so different that you can actually notice it. Then the spacing to the left where that other door is on the left side of the image here is I think t just a little under 20 inches and the spacing on the right side of the window is 21 and 5 eighths. So that, that panel there is adjacent to the panels on wall number one. So 21 and 5 eighths and 22 and a half. You're really not going to be able to notice any difference um, just visually looking at it. So those are some of the things you have to think about is making sure adjacent walls, the paneling spacing is similar. And, uh, and overall on a single wall, it's, it's close enough to where you're not going to notice a difference. Sometimes it can be tricky. This, in this case, it definitely was. I didn't really achieve my, my ideal here because I wanted one of the styles to end at the, at the cutout of the window. That's not going to happen. Um, it's going to end before that. You can see one of them's going to end right at the tip of my finger there. That's the center of a style. And the other center is right at the tip of my finger on this side. things about this uh, one was we had we put uh, liquid nails on the wall so you saw me put a bead of liquid nails before we put that and then uh, we added 18 gauge bread nails um, two inch so we know there's studs all around this window so we just shot into it and we hit studs and it's attached nicely one thing I want to point out though is we still have the texture on the inside of the wall here I want to eliminate that so what I did was I made this stick out just a little bit so not even a millimeter of overhang is is what this trim piece is at and that's that's the same on both sides and that was very um intentional so i'm going to come back here with joint compound and cover this space to where it looks perfectly smooth sand it out and then it will look perfectly smooth you won't see any of this texture um this wall texture so you might have to do that if you've got texture in your house So I push it all the way up against the wall. One thing I know about this, this size of material, this one by material, is that it's going to stick out past my casing of my door. That's not good. You don't want anything on your walls that's trim work wise to stick out past casings on doors. That's why your baseboards are all thinner than your casings on your doors or they should be. It's, it's supposed to be like that. So this, this is not so good. So one technique that I saw um, and that I, I read about using looking at blogs and things was to use a back band just basically a 
piece of material that's going to come out. Of course, not this much. I'm going to cut it down, but it's going to sort of enclose my wainscoting. So that's the technique I'm going to use. And I'm actually going to tie that in to my chair rail. So this is going to be a 45 degree bevel cut up here. And then my chair rail will also be at a 45 and it will tie in and go straight across. So hopefully it's going to make it look good. Um, that's, that's the idea anyway, is to do that. So one other thing, this wasn't my original width of my, of this piece of poplar that I have down here. The original width was a little bit more, but I cut it down because I want my reveal. Once I put this baseboard here, none of this is attached. Once I put this baseboard here, I want this reveal to be about three and a half inches. And it's going to be about three and a half inches. So that's why I ripped it down to, to that width. Now we'll account for our back band and mark it where the length, where I'm going to make my cut. Alright, it's going to be right there. It's going to be enough to fit the back band in there. Like I said, enclose the entire uh, wainscoting setup. The other advantage of bringing this in and, and doing it on the wall is that I've got my center locations for my styles. I can very easily I'm gonna do it after I make that cut because I'll have it right up against the wall, but I can very easily mark off based on my marks on my wall on my wall where my styles need to be, the centers of them. Then I just go and mark the centers of those pieces of wood, line up the centers, pocket holes, attach them, it's done. So alright, here's one of my three and a half inch wide styles. I ripped it down to an inch and a quarter. This is gonna be my back band. You can see I already made my 45 degree bevel on the top. It's gonna go right here. Like I said, it's gonna enclose in the wainscoting. So we're gonna attach that right quick. Let's see how we are on the height from the floor. Uh, we're actually a little too high. And that's good. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the back here. Just make sure we got a good hold. And then we're gonna shoot some brads. Okay. Like that. Push it up against the wall. Nice and tight. And come in with the brads. Like I said, this is one technique to um, combat that issue with the thickness of the wings. Scotting being more than the thickness of your door casings. So here goes with another. I want to make sure you're shooting in such a way that the nails are not going to come out, obviously, on the other side. Hopefully I do that. And now that glue is going to dry and it's going to get really hard. Assembly is about to start. So we've got our lower rail, our upper rail. I'm doing this in the house so that I can put things in place and make sure that they are the right length. If I do it all outside and I build the whole thing, there's a chance that because of this, this window cut out and stuff, things might not exactly fit just right. So I'm going to do it in place so I can have headboards with me, make sure that they are the right size. And the advantage is that now I can also mark right onto the board because of my vertical style center locations that are already marked on the wall. So that's what I've done here. I got, I got my marks on this board, got my marks on the lower rail, got my pocket holes into my styles. My styles are already cut. They're three and a half inch styles, like I mentioned earlier, and three and a half inch top rails and three and a half inch reveal on the lower rail. So now I'm just going to be putting this together.
you saw all that come together pretty quick. Like I said, it's, it's very fast once you, once you start a towel, I thought it would go. Now that we know it fits, this is our dry fit test. We're gonna liquid, put some liquid nails in the back, push it up against the wall, shoot some brads into our studs. attached to the wall now this is what it looks all the way around the room it's starting to look pretty good symmetrical about this window that was like I said important to me so that gap between that first style and the window trim and that first style and the window trim is exactly the same a couple things about it you probably saw me putting shims up along the bottom I intentionally made the height of the wainscoting paneling about a quarter inch shorter than it needed to be that's because we had that waviness in the floor that I needed to account for. There was a waviness in this floor and also in this floor there was a rise kind of near the middle of the window as well. So that quarter inch meant that I just take uh, some shims, put them on the ends, and then I don't need to fight with trying to shave down the bottom to perfectly fit the floor, especially since I'm gonna put a baseboard over it anyway, baseboard and a shoe molding. This little piece was popping out on me and I don't have a stud anywhere around here. So I did have enough liquid nails on the back so you can see my solution. Tap into some nearby studs and pull it on there and I'm going to leave it like that for probably another hour or so until that liquid nails dries. Okay, on to the next. Alright, we're putting the chair rail on. It's basically just this piece that's running along the top. I got it cut to an inch and a quarter deep so that's how much it's going to stick out. You can see I've got it beveled so it lines up with this piece. And I decided to put a half inch overhang onto the trim of the, uh, of the window. So that's, that's the detail that I made on this side. Pretty simple and I put a little chamfer, uh, uh, like I, I think it's about a quarter inch chamfer on the end. So it fits in there pretty snugly and I like that little detail sticking over. Some of this you just do what you, what you like, you know. Find, find your own style, and as long as it's good, then you'll be all right. So we're gonna uh, run a little bit of glue on the top of this, just to make sure it's good over time. And let's drop this on here. Yeah, I really like, I really like the way this looks here. And especially when I give it a little caulk, come back with the sprayer. Man, that's gonna look really good. All right, so shoot some brads straight down. These are inch and a quarter brads. All right, it's on there real good. Nothing stuck at the bottom, so we're good to go. Next thing we'll do here is the window seal. Let me back you up a little bit. So here's the window sill. I've already got it in place. Uh, I just dropped in place. Uh, it's just another piece of finger jointed pine, one by material. I shaved a little bit off, but it just so happens that I can use this piece here. We elected to go with no seal overhang, so it's going to be flush with the paneling, uh, with the trim paneling around the window. It's going to look really sharp. It's a good modern look. Let's see, let's, what's going on? Alright. This is what we're going to use on the, uh, in between the panels, in between the styles and rails. It's a flat piece of wood, it's very thin, it's not even a quarter inch. Um, it might be three eighths. Three eighths, that's more than a quarter. It's not quite an eighth, but it might be three sixteenths, I mean, to say. So, here we go, and right now I, I marked out for where my outlet is going to be on this particular one. Drill the hole in the middle, and now we're going to use a uh, jigsaw. Cut it out real quick. Okay. 
just like that. It's gonna go on the wall. Back side is gonna have liquid nails on it, and I'm probably gonna shoot some, shoot some brads in the in the corners to hold it on. I'm gonna cut this this molding, and this is gonna be molding that is not on an even plane. Anytime you have molding not on an even plane or that's gonna rest on two planes, like crown molding, for example, you want to cut it when it's nested in the saw in some way. Crown molding, a lot of times you don't even need to build the jig just because you can rest it against the two flat planes on the molding. This molding is a bit different. And I'm trying to show you the cross section right here. So here's the cross section of this molding. It's kind of interesting. Let's put it up on here. It's kind of interesting because it's got this little cutout here and that's where it's gonna sit on my one by material on the styles and rails. And then this is where it's gonna sit on my thin plywood in the center. So it's gonna make that, that jump basically in, in different depths of my wainscoting like that. So I need to be able to cut it in that position. And I can't do that by just putting it on the saw any old way and hoping that I get it right. If you don't cut it in that position, your corners, your bevels are not gonna line up. So here's what I've done. I've notched out a groove in the back of this one by material. This is my same old style and rail material that I've been using, just a scrap piece. I've notched out a piece in the back using my table saw, and that piece fits flush with my um, 1 8th, 3 16th, whatever it is, material that I'm gonna use for that. So, now I just need to attach those two together. I'm gonna to use handy dandy CA glue for that. Hopefully I've got enough. These bottles of CA glue, they really do go a long way. been using this one for a while. Okay. So I've got that there. Let's go ahead and spray the accelerator on this piece here. Like that. And then we attach. And you see me use CA glue enough, you know it doesn't take very long for it to work its magic. I'm gonna spray the rest just to make sure it dries. It doesn't drip onto my saw. All right, so that's attached. So this is my surface that I'm gonna be sitting all my molding on when I go to make my cuts. I can leave it like this, and I think I just might leave it like this. And then as I move the saw, I'll just put it back in position uh, and make my cut. Yeah, I think that's gonna be easiest. I was thinking about gluing it to the saw, not necessary. We're just gonna go like that, and I'll just be making my cut. So let's see how, let's see how this works. Hopefully I have enough um, eighth of an inch material here that when I cut, I'm not going to cut through the whole thing, so it'll stay together basically, is what I'm looking for. And I'll send it on there just like that. Alright, so I wouldn't have been able to make that cut any other way without it being nested. And I think that's my angle that is going to line up perfectly with my bevel. But we'll test it out and go in the house and fit it up. Alright guys, so this is how this is going. I am putting the pieces of the picture frame offset panel molding in here. I've already got a few on. I'm just walking through the process. So I'm putting them in place, kind of dry fitting them. And because of the method that I used in assembling this thing with the putting the, putting the actual uh, one by material on first and then cutting out squares for the inset material, um, it is going to vary a bit in terms of how much of an offset I actually have uh, because of waviness in the wall, because of how much I smashed down the mastic, because of how much I sucked in the, uh, the piece of one-by material when I was putting it on there. 
or how much gap there was there. So because of that, it's going to affect how tight my corners are here. And so what I've been doing um, is usually putting this first one in with CA glue on it, or at least one. I think in all four of the ones I've done so far, I put CA glue on at least one of the corners, depending on if the fit was uh, not looking so great. So I'm going to see it glue this first corner here. And there we go. I'm going to put it on. And then I'm using pin nails to attach these and really don't need a whole lot because these are not going to be pulled on or anything like that. So they're going to be on there pretty good. So I've been just putting a, putting a pin nail across the top rail here so it goes into the one by material. Pushing it up so I don't have any gaps. And you can see I've got a small gap here against the, the plywood paneling in the center, which is okay. I'm going to cough there anyway. We'll come in here, and you can see this is actually a pretty good corner, so I'm not going to use CA glue there. Hey guys, as you can see, I ripped off a piece of the plywood. Uh, you might already be able to tell what's wrong with this picture. It's fine with just the one by and the plywood in there. I got plenty of room for my box cover. And what happens whenever I put my molding on? <laughs> It's right over top. So obviously, I've got a couple of options. I cut the mold in here. That's gonna look horrible. So I'm not, uh, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna do it the right way. Took my piece of plywood off. It did not come off easily. You can see I damaged this, this style here. But with the amount of overhang that I have with this panel molding, I will be completely covering up the damage made. So no harm done there. Also damaged this side, but that liquid nails is holding pretty good, so that's a good sign. So anyway, we're gonna take this out. I've got a stud about this area. I'm probably not gonna be able to really drive any nails in here without significantly opening the drywall. So I think I'm gonna use an old work box, the one with the uh, with the toggles on the back, the little plastic toggles that cinch it up to the wall. So that's what I'm gonna do now, is just shift this, uh, shift this over. Also, by the way, power is off to this, so make sure you do that before you work with any electrical stuff. It's probably pretty obvious, but make sure you do that. Job. 
even with all these details that needed to be sprayed around, there's not a single drip. The other wall, uh, wall number two, also came out really nice. Um, just the symmetry around the window, making it the focal point of the room is awesome. The effect of the trim goes all the way up and around and really ties in together with the, with the uh, wainscoting, came out really nice. What can I say about this? Uh, it was kind of hairy towards the end, because I was thinking I was going to run out of this molding. It was kind of funny. I bought 96 feet, uh, six sticks of uh, 16 foot PM6 is the name of this molding. You can't buy this molding everywhere. It doesn't, the Home Depot doesn't sell it. Um, and most of the other large uh, big box stores don't sell it. So I, I went to a specialty lumber yard to get it. And uh, they're not open on the weekend. So it's kind of like a bummer. I thought I was going to run out and I wouldn't be able to finish the job. Well, it turns out that I needed every inch of that molding because even here towards the end, I had to, I had to actually put a seam because I didn't have this final piece. I didn't have enough length. So I took a scrap piece that I had that was like four inches long and it worked out. That was the longest scrap piece that I, that I had. Um, I'll also show you this here. So you remember we, we were worried about our texture here. Well, I floated this out and it looks like it's part of the board. So it came out, came out honestly better than expected. So can't do much better than that. Pretty happy with it overall. And like I said, we've, we've taken this boring area of the house and we've dressed it up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you took something out of it. Basically the biggest thing for me that I learned on my first time doing wainscoting is the front end work is the most important. Um, laying this out, having an idea of sizes and proportions and symmetries and, and um, depth changes is crucial. You know, I spent so much time, I probably spent five or six, six hours just laying the thing out and I still had an issue with that outlet over there that um, ended up being a small thing. But uh, thankfully no other, no other large problems with the job but I can't, I can't overemphasize that enough. Something like this, you definitely need to plan it out in your head before you get started. But uh, once you do that, it's kind of smooth sailing. There was nothing really surprising at the end of that outside of that outlet. And it was pretty simple work. So I think this is something that anybody can do with basic tools and, and I hope you take it on and I hope it goes well for you. Best of luck. Mm -hmm.